is from the University of Texas. Um, we know there's going to be a lot of questions. If you want to raise your hands now, Barry, we already got you. We're going to try to keep this moving as best we can. Brian, we got you. But first, here's the head coach at the University of Texas, Steve Sarkeesian. Sark? Hang on, let's make sure the mic's on here. Okay. Is it on? Can you all hear me? There we go. Now we go. Good. All righty. Well, uh, it's great to be here. I think this is a... Uh, it's always an exciting time of year when you're thinking about the kickoff of college football. Uh, media days always seem to be the ones that uh, kind of set that off and set that stage for everybody. Um, I love this time because I think that uh, you know I get to be here with, with four or five of our players and spend some quality time with them and, and have them the opportunity to share about our program and, and what we've been doing. Um, so. You know, I think first of all, thank you all for taking the time for being here with us and, and spending this time with us because without you, we couldn't celebrate college football the way that I think it should. Uh, we have an unbelievable game. It's an unbelievable sport. And I know we love to talk a lot about the things that are wrong with our game right now, but there's a lot of things right about our game. And the, the game of college football, the sport of college football is amazing. Uh, I'm extremely fortunate to be the head coach of the University of Texas to be part of this. And uh, I, I cherish it every day. I, don't, I do not take it lightly. As far as our team goes, uh, year two is exciting. Year two is always exciting when you take over a program. Um, because when you, when you come in in year one, there's so many things to instill uh, in your program from philosophies to schemes to discipline to uh, all the things that it goes into. Um, and when you get into year two, now those things start to really come to life. And, you know, I had an old mentor of mine talk to me about the first time I became a head coach. He said, there's two ways when you take over a program you can approach it. One, to do as many things as you can similar to the last staff. Uh, and that will probably be easier on the players, be easier on the staff, because they'll be normal to them. Uh, it'll be something that, that they'll feel more comfortable with. But when you do it that way, you better be prepared for similar results. The other way is to go truly implement what you're about, who you are, knowing that that way is probably going to be a little bit more difficult, that the buy-in from the players might take a little longer, uh, the transition for the players and the staff might be a little bit more difficult, there may be more bumps in the road, there may be more rocky waters, which clearly we endured last season, but when you come out on the other side of it, man, now you've got a team that is really bought into what you want to do and a staff really bought into what you want to do and a roster that is built the way you want it built uh, to go achieve the success that you want to try to achieve. And I think that's where we're at in year two. Um, you know, just off the cuff, I was having lunch with all the guys that are here today and listening to them talk about what year two feels like in comparison to year one, uh, it's night and day. And for a, or for a head coach, you know, that's really encouraging um, because we've got a lot of new faces on our team. But when your leadership of your team believes so strongly in what you're doing, uh, it's a lot easier for the young guys to fall in line. Uh, when, I think of, when I think of young guys, just so that everybody's aware, we have 35 new scholarship players on our roster this year of our 85 total number scholarships. Uh, seven of those are transfers, 28 of them are freshmen. Um, Ten of those freshmen were here in January. Okay, so a lot of new faces here this summer. Uh, and then when you look at our total roster of our 85 scholarships, 57 of those young men are freshmen and sophomores. So we're a young football team, but what I love about it, like I said, is the veterans that we do have, there's a tremendous amount of buy-in. So we're excited for the fall. Uh, we're excited to get this thing started. Uh, I love the work that our guys have put in. I love the chemistry, the bond that our team has forged together, and uh, looking forward to watching our guys compete come September. All right, Coach, we're going to take a question. We're going to start off over to the right here, Barry Trammell. Barry? Yes, Steve, Barry Trammell with the Oklahoma. Year two of, of uh, building the Texas program, but you're in a unique situation. You also have to plan for the future, going to a different conference. What kind of decisions do you have to make with sort of not just program, but also knowing that you've got a different landscape coming up in a year or two? Yeah, I, I think for us, you know, having come from the SEC, I had an idea of a, of a style of play that I wanted to play regardless of the conference that we were going to be in. And that was a big physical front on both sides of the ball. Um, 
with speed on the perimeter. So we had already started to develop our roster and build our roster that way. Um, so regardless of playing this year in the Big 12 or next year in the Big 12 or whatever this is going to look like, our style of play, our roster that we have in place is one that regardless of who we play is going to be one that fits us in what we want to do. Um, and I think that we're, we're moving in that direction to make that happen. Um, so it's not as challenging for me because I don't think that we're trying to shift one way and go to another. This is just our belief of who we want to be as a team. And I think we saw it some in recruiting last year. We recruited, you know, signed seven offensive linemen, eight defensive linemen, so 15 linemen. Uh, of the 35 guys that joined our team. So uh, there's an idea of, yes, that's the direction we want to go in. And then if, to use one kid in an example, we signed a receiver from Spearman, Texas, Brendan Thompson, who runs a, ran a 10 200 meters. There's the speed on the perimeter. So regardless of who we're playing or where we're playing, there's a brand of football that we want to adhere to. All right, Coach, we'll go left side here. Familiar face for you. Hey, Steve, Brian Davis, Austin. Hey, Brian. Statesman. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the linemen. Uh, how has the summer gone with all of the new offensive and defensive linemen? And has the uh, the way the summer workout structure with the coaches monitoring that has that gone about as good as you had hoped? Yeah, that, those groups. I'm going to go. I'm going to answer your second question first here, Brian. So from a for the summer workouts, it's been fantastic. You know, the idea that we get to work with our players and from skill development. Uh, and spend time with them, especially from a lineman's perspective for Coach Flood and for Coach, Coach Davis. Um, I think that it's been, a, it's been an integral part to the growth of these guys even before training camp. You know, we signed those seven freshman offensive linemen, but only one of them was an, was an early admit. So the other six didn't show up until after Memorial Day. And so for Coach Flood to be able to work with those guys, um, meet with them, work on techniques, fundamentals, uh, has been tremendous. And those guys, that freshman class, I think is, is poised to, to do something special at the University of Texas. They got the right work ethic, they got the right mindset, they have the physical traits. Now ultimately, they you know, we gotta put it all together. And I think them coming on board has created a lot of healthy competition, not only for themselves, but for the returners. And I, so I think twofold, competition should bring the best out of all of us, not only for those young guys, but for the older players. So we're excited about the addition of them. I think the summers have, summer so far has been good to us. Um, and then we gotta see how far we can take them uh, come fall camp and, and come fall when the season rolls around. All right, Coach, we're going to go uh, just to the right of the middle, but four rows back. Uh, Jeff Wilson with Frogs today. How has Gary Patterson been to work with, and how has he? Uh, what, what influence has he had uh, so far? Yeah, Gary, having Coach Patterson on board has probably been um, something that has excited me of, of most of a lot of the things that we've done this offseason. I've always been intrigued by Coach Patterson from afar. I've always admired his defensive mind. I've always admired the style of play in which his teams played. I've always admired um, his ability to recruit and to project players to different positions in the recruiting process. And so to get him on board, um, which was not easy, you know, I kept kind of swinging on him to, to get him to come down to Austin. Uh, has been fantastic. And the one thing that I've learned more about Coach Patterson than any is the person that he is. He's got great rapport with the other coaches on staff, uh, with the other staff members, with our players. And then the biggest thing for me is him being a sounding board for our defensive staff, him being a sounding board for Coach Kwiatkowski uh, throughout spring ball as we're game planning for our, for our early game opponents of just different ways to play things, you know, adjustments that may need to be made based on if, if something could occur. He's a very forward thinker. And um, like I said, he, he's been a joy to, to have on staff and, and looking forward to just being around him, you know, for the next six, seven months as this season unfolds. Okay, Coach, we're going to stay to the left side here, right there. Hey, Steve, Cedric Golden, Austin American Statesman. I think I know the answer to this. Uh, have you named a starting quarterback? <laughs> and if not, what's going to go into that decision? I know your first year at USC, Cody Kessler was the guy. But uh, you have some unknown quantities here with uh, yours and Cart. 
Yeah, you know, one, I think we're in a really good position. Um, you know, the guys, the local guys that cover us on a daily basis, I think you know the value I place on the quarterback position. And I, my humble opinion, it's the most important position in sports for a lot of reasons. And I think the more quality players you can have in that room for the healthy competition to push one another, to prepare themselves for their future, but also the short-term future of playing a season is vitally important. Uh, we have a, a unique luxury of having Hudson Card, Quinn Ewers, Malik Murphy. Um, th those guys are all quality players. And the beauty of the summer is we've been around these guys all summer long and been able to been on the field with them with skill development to see some of the growth that they could make from spring ball into summer. So, no, we haven't made a decision yet, Cedric, but um, I don't think it'll take quite as long as maybe last fall took us. Um, we'll see. You know, time will tell. Um, but, but I've been really impressed with both these guys and Hudson and Quinn and the work that they've done to prepare themselves. And I think they've earned a lot of respect from their teammates, uh, which is the most important thing. Um, but they've definitely got the respect of myself, Coach Milwee, our entire coaching staff. Um, and I think we're going to be in good hands. And like any football season goes, very rarely do you just go through one entire season with one quarterback having to make a play to be a championship caliber team. Somewhere in there, that other guy has to show up and make a play for you or, may, or win a game for you unexpectedly. And uh, I think that we've got two very capable young men at that position. All right, Coach, right in front of us here, second row, just to the right. Tom Richardson from Orange Bloods. Coach, uh, just kind of curious, what are some things that you may have learned in, in year one, whether it's as an individual, the team, the, uh, the conference, your staff, that may help you guys be more successful in year two? Yeah, I think the, the, the biggest thing, Amwar, that has stood out to me that, I, you know, I've touched on with the local, you guys before, but I, I, do, I do think this is important. I didn't think I did a great job a year ago of developing the team and the quality of team and the bond on our team as well as I would have liked. And, and granted, we had some difficult circumstances um, with, you know, not having a facility done yet and being kind of in temporary housing to just not making a great connection to um, ultimately not identifying the leadership in a, in a really good way. Um, and so it's been a huge point of emphasis of ours in January all the way through now of bonding as a team and becoming a team and becoming accountable to one another and relying on one another and uh, being really transparent, open and honest and sharing with one another so you can really get to know your teammates because I think in this day and age, most of these guys, you know, when they have a free moment, they get on their phone and they text or they get on Instagram or Twitter or whatever social media and they don't talk to one another. So we've been trying to foster that type of environment and it's amazing to see what our team is like. We did a team outing yesterday and I could hear them and it wasn't a bunch of guys sitting on their phone. When they're on their phone, it's silent. I could hear them laughing, talking, sharing with one another. And ultimately, that's what great teams have. That's how you win these tight games in the fourth quarter. So that was probably the biggest thing that I learned um, that I don't, I don't think caught me off guard, but I'm like, dang it, I wish I could have done something a little bit better. That was it. And uh, I'm proud to say I think that we have. You know, time will tell what the fall looks like, but I really think that we have. We've got a tight-knit football team right now. All right, Coach, we're going to go right down the middle, just to the right side in the purple right there. Hey, Coach, Carly Murray, Gaylord College. With the era of the transfer portal, there's a fear that players may leave if they don't get enough playing time. You have a lot of offensive weapons. How do you plan on distributing the ball? Well, I, I think th there's a lot in that question, so I'm going to go with, with, our, with our team first. I've been fortunate throughout my career to have been surrounded by some really good players. And not just really good players, a lot of them on the same teams throughout my, my time. I mean, there was a time I was coaching Reggie Bush and Lendell White in the same backfield with Matt Liner at quarterback. <laughs> All those guys potentially could have won a Heisman Trophy, and two of them did. Um, I was calling plays at Alabama when I had four first-round receivers all on the field at the same time, and Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, Devontae Smith, and Jalen Waddell with Tua Tonga-Vailoa at quarterback and Najee Harris at running back. 
uh, in the end, uh, when you focus on the team aspect first and knowing that, hey, if the team does well, that means everybody is eating. Everybody's getting their opportunities, and when my opportunity comes, I make my plays. And this era of the transfer portal really is no different. Um, you know, if, if we if we if we want to buy into the the selfish idea of society wants to wants to make us fall into, which is social media, uh, then we are going to have a problem. But I think we spend a lot of time talking about team uh, and minimizing self. And knowing that, you know, my job is to the team and if the team does well, the individual accolades, rewards and things will come as a byproduct of that. And I think our team understands that. Uh, and in the end, if we're going to be a successful team, all of these offensive weapons that we have, uh, they'll all be really productive because we're going to need all of them to be as successful a team as we can be. All right, coach, to the right side. we got time for probably three or four more questions right here. Hey, Coach. Parker Abels, uh, Gaylord College. You've been recruiting the quarterback position really well, landing Quinn Ewers, who is the number one quarterback in the 21 class, and now a commitment from the top recruit in the 23 class. How have those guys impacted your program, and do you think those guys are helping other recruits come? Well, you know, I touched on this earlier. I, I, I do believe that the quarterback position is the most important position in sports. And that's not just because of being able to throw post routes and curl routes and slant routes. I think they're the, the, the best quarterbacks, the great quarterbacks, are influential people. And in this day and age of the, the players being able to connect with one another in the recruiting process, they do have an impact on where some certain, where certain people go. Uh, and so you have to be very mindful of the types of kids you recruit at the quarterback position, um, the things that they, that they liken to, the things that are important to them. Uh, because generally, if, they, if it's important to them, then it's going to be important to the people that they are connected to. And generally, those are going to be the guys that ultimately join your team. So uh, I do think it matters. I do think recruiting is about momentum. Um, we've hit some momentum streaks here over the last 18 months. And hopefully we can continue to have those momentum streaks throughout my time here. Um, and I think, yeah, there is there is a lot that goes into the quarterback because not only do they matter on the field when it's, when it's game day, I think it matters in recruiting. I think it matters in morale. I think quarterbacks matter in the locker room. Um, so uh, we'll continue to recruit that position at a very high level. Coach, I think we have time for two more questions. Unfortunately, we're going to go way in the back there, right-hand side, and then we'll go down to you. Hey, Coach, Ryan Swankowski, Texas Student Television. There's a lot of excitement each and every year about the new football season. What would you say, if you had to talk to the students, the fans, is going to be the most exciting part about next season after your first season just finished? Well, I think for me, you know, one of my most memorable moments was the first time I ever got to run out of the tunnel at DKR. And... Um, you know, to see 100,000 people in there wearing their burnt orange and white, screaming, yelling, uh, it's unbelievable. And I think our student section plays an impact in that. I think they provide a lot of energy into the stadium, the students, the band. Uh, the earlier they're there, the more in their seats, the more energy it feels like is in the stadium. So all I would encourage is to, to get there early, um, make sure we're not sitting in our seats, that, that we're, we're standing up and that we create the, the game day home field advantage at DKR, uh, one that is as intimidating as anywhere in the country, which it can be. All right, one final question. Before, I just want to remind everybody that all the press conference are archived on Big 12 Now, quotes and media day items also on Big12Sports.com in case you missed anything. Final question, Coach, right in front. Hey, Steve, Brett McMurphy with the Action Network. You play Alabama this year. What did it mean to your career when Nick hired you in 2016? And also, what do you take from his program and try to implement in yours? Yeah, I mean, I unbelievable amount of respect for Coach Saban in that program. Um, I, without Nick Saban, I wouldn't be sitting here today in front of y'all. And I owe a great deal to him. I owe uh, so much to him. And, and you know, I, I will never, ever forget that he and Miss Terry have been tremendous to, in, in my life and my wife's life and, and what they've done for us uh, on and off the field. Uh, I owe him a great deal. And with that being said, I can't wait to play him because I know I know what he puts into it. I know the work ethic. I know the discipline uh, that he has personally. Uh, I know what that then he instills into his organization, into that team. 
Um, and I think ultimately that's what you try to take when you leave Alabama because you can't try to be Nick Saban. There's only one. You have to be a Steve Sarkeesian. But the discipline and commitment that he has personally to that program uh, that then he instills into his team and to his own organization is something that you try to emulate. And um, I cherished my time there with him. Uh, I love my time there with him and, and looking forward to playing him uh, uh, in week two. All right, thank you, everybody. All right, y'all. We appreciate, appreciate everybody it. coming Hope. to the 2012 Big 12 Football Media Days.